Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Dev Diary. Like many, I was introduced to Sleep Token this year thanks to the trip that was The Summoning. And since they've got a new album coming out in a few days, I thought we'd celebrate by turning one of their music videos into a video game. Unfortunately, at the time I'm recording this episode, uh, the band's only released visuals for the album, so instead we're going back in time and recreating the band's video for Alkaline as a video game. But before we get into things, remember to leave a like if you enjoyed today's video and subscribe if you're new to the channel. I work on a ton of different video game concepts every week, so turn on notifications to avoid missing future videos. Now with that said, let's make sure we're all up to speed with a brief overview of the music video. The music video for Alkaline features a dark hooded man in a mask who doesn't seem to know what to do with his hands. We've also got a group of hooded men in masks with guns, uh, presumably searching for the dark hooded man. There's also a spider, or spider-like creature. The ending of the video sees the group of hooded men find the dark hooded man chilling in front of a fireplace. And dark hooded man channels his inner Neo using his mind to block a few shots from one of the gunmen. He then proceeds to force choke said gunman. Another is crushed with the telekinesis. The next, the dark hooded man summons a sentient vine to pull one of the last gunmen away, before finally calling upon his large spider friend to take the final gunman out to a nice dinner. Basically, Dark Hooded Man goes god mode, and I thought that sequence would make for a fun video game. So let's start with the visuals, because I wanted to note that I'd recently changed art programs. So the art was produced while also learning how to use the program, and as a result, way too much time was spent on the visuals. To the point where, despite giving myself a good amount of time, a lot of this project was scaled back in order to release this video on time. Having said that, there's still a ton to this project, so let's get to the features. Now, our game reimagines the final sequence of the video as a resource management action game. So each attack that Vessel, our dark hooded friend, does is a separate attack with its own cooldown, forcing the player to manage their attacks and prioritize targets accordingly. Speaking of which, let's go over said targets. Starting with the first attack, the Force Choke. Well, it's less of a Force Choke and more of a, I don't know, a, a mixture of the Crush and Choke from the video. So, uh, like, <laughs> massive internal damage. Honestly, there were supposed to be random outcomes of both choking and crushing, but due to time restraints, enemies sort of just burst into a cloud and enter their eternal rests, I guess. It's the most useful attack with the shortest cooldown period. Up next is the first of two doorway reliant attacks, the Vine Whip attack. This was reimagined as something more out of Pokemon because there was just way too much brown and gray, making it difficult to decipher what's happening. The Vine Whip acts as it does in the video, grabbing the nearest enemy to its position and pulling it back through the doorway. The attack is on a timer, so even if it doesn't grab an enemy, the Vine will eventually retract. It's a short range attack meant to be used sparingly as uh, more of a support to the first attack. The third attack is, of course, our spider friend. It works very similarly to the vine whip, only the spider leg travels across the entire screen. It can grab multiple enemies at the same time, pulling them all back into the darkness it came from. And much like the vine, it too works via time sequence, meaning if it doesn't, uh poke any enemies, it'll eventually retract, and it is arguably the most useful in terms of crowd control and boasts the longest cooldown time of all the attacks. And thus brings us to our final attack, which is actually our one and only defensive ability. It is of course the Matrix Shield. This attack creates a simple shield object that lasts for about a second, and if during the enemy's attack phase this shield is between the player and said enemy, it will of course shield the player and negate any damage. Now, if the player takes enough damage, which is 12 hits for those counting, a black screen pops up stating a vessel sleeps because, you know, it'd be pretty grim to depict the man dying. Also, I have no idea what Vessel Sleep means, I just thought it sounded mysterious and worked better than the typical uh, game over text. And that's our conversion of the final sequence in Alkaline, but in video game form. 
Now, admittedly, these are not originally how the attacks were meant to be. There was meant to be a greater sense of diversity in the way that the powers worked. For example, chokes and crushes were meant to be more dynamic. The vine attack was also meant to be more dynamic and less rigid. The spider leg was also meant to be able to traverse beyond just horizontal movement. And even the shield was meant to be less of an orb and offer more strategy. However, as mentioned earlier, a lack of time meant scaling these concepts back a lot which is why the vine and spider attacks are so similar. The enemies themselves were also meant to be more diverse with different behaviors and weapons, but instead their behavior is simply to reach a determined point in the room and begin attacking the player. Speaking of which, there was meant to be a lighting system which explains why lights begin shining into the room before an enemy spawns. This was meant to be a dynamic indicator of an enemy's approach. However, despite the scale back, there's still a lot of fun technical stuff going on. For example, the shield effect was achieved through a use of layer effects and surfaces. Surfaces also allowed us to stack enemy bodies as high as we wanted without taking a hit to the performance. And since layer effects were in use here, coupled with the visual style of the game, meant that the draw order was important. So working on this game allowed me to actually finally finish the depth system we started building in our tower defense project. So overall, I'm satisfied with the final result, though there will always be that want to go back and make it closer to the original idea. It's currently more of a toy, though progression was was meant to really lean into a roguelite nature of updates and synergies. But this was probably the closest I've gotten to a game jam like project in a really long time and it was fun to reimagine a music video as a video game, which is something I've actually never done before. I should also mention that no, this game is not and will not be available for download uh, due to obvious copyright reasons. So as much as I would love to keep working on this concept and have it reach its full potential, we'll just have to settle for what we can get. But hey, if a sleep token ever wants to make it happen, um, I'm open to the cause. And actually, if you'd like to play some of the other games I've created in the past, I've got an itch.io page. You can also play an exclusive number of game releases and get early access to my weekly game dev content by supporting me on Patreon. But with that said, what did you think of today's project? And while we're at it, what's your favorite sleep token song? Leave your thoughts in the comments. That'll do it for today's dev diary. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.